Hello, Veer. Today, we will continue with discussion on properties of trigonometric functions. I hope you followed our last lesson and you have done some practice of using, applying those properties as discussed earlier. Let us take a look at the properties before we consider some more applications, which are going to be of tremendous use to you as we progress further into the world of calculus. The six properties as listed in your NCRT are sin inverse of 1 by x is cosec inverse x, cos of inverse 1 by x is sec inverse x, tan inverse of 1 by x is cot inverse x. Under these specific restrictions, which define the principal value branches. Also, sin inverse of minus x is minus sin inverse x, x belongs to close interval minus 1 to 1. Cosec inverse of minus x is minus of cosec inverse x, tan inverse of minus x is minus of tan inverse x. Third property, cos inverse of negative x is pi minus cos inverse x, sec inverse of minus x is pi minus sec inverse x, cot inverse of minus x is pi minus cot inverse x. The fourth one comes again very handy, sin inverse of x plus cos inverse x is pi by 2, cosec inverse x plus sec inverse x is also pi by 2, tan inverse x plus cot inverse x is pi by 2. The next property which we discussed a whole lot last time says that tan inverse x plus tan inverse y is equal to tan inverse of x plus y by 1 minus x y with of course the restriction that the product x y must be less than 1. And similar to that we also have tan inverse of x minus tan inverse y is equal to tan inverse x minus y by 1 plus x y where x y must be greater than minus 1. And also twice tan inverse x is equal to tan inverse 2x by 1 minus x square, x restricted between minus 1 and 1 strictly. The last, the sixth property says that twice tan inverse x is equal to sin inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square, where absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1 and twice tan inverse x is cos inverse of 1 minus x square by 1 plus x square, where x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, these properties somewhere or other gave us the confidence that yes, the grade 11 trigonometric formulas are all coming in use somewhere or other. Like the sixth property that is listed here, this can be proved only if you have the understanding that sin 2 theta has a relation with tan theta. Remember? sin 2 theta can be written as 2 tan theta by 1 plus tan square theta. So, if you use the grade 11 trigonometric formulas, these results start making much more sense. Today, we will be working on using these properties and grade 11 trigonometric formulas to write expressions which are inverse trigonometric expressions in their simplest form. And what we are going to do today is going to come in use also in differential and integral calculus chapters that are coming right ahead. So, pay close attention to these techniques of writing an expression which is big, more complex, simplified down to a very manageable expression. The kind of questions that we are talking about look something like this. You have to write the following in the simplest form. I have two examples here. The first one says that it is tan inverse of root of 1 minus cos x by 1 plus cos x and there is also a restriction on x given. x is less than pi. You have to write it in the simplest form. The second one tan inverse of under root of 1 plus x square minus 1 by x, x is not equal to 0. So, how does one start writing these expressions in the simplest form? The method or the strategy may just change depending on what kind of a function is given to us. Let us start with the first one. We have tan inverse under root 1 minus cos x by 1 plus cos x. As I said just a while back, 11 standard trigonometric formulas are the key to most of these questions. 
So, if you see 1 minus cos x, is there any formula that you learned in 11 standard that rings a bell? Surely, it is. 1 minus cos x was 2 sin square x by 2. Similarly, 1 plus cos x was 2 cos square x by 2. So, rewrite and you have something like this, which further can be simplified and written as tan inverse of absolute value of sin of x by 2 divided by absolute value of cos of x by 2. Absolute sign is used with an understanding that under root of square of an x may be plus or a minus of x. It depends on whether x is positive or negative. The outcome will depend on that, but outcome will always be a positive quantity. Now, how do we know whether sin x by 2 is positive or negative? Remember, there was a condition given in the question. We had x given as less than pi. So, if x is less than pi, then x by 2 must be less than pi by 2. That is, the angle is in the first quadrant. And therefore, sin x by 2 and cos x by 2 are both positive. And so, we are free to write the expression as tan inverse of sin x by 2 upon cos x by 2, which is nothing but tan of x by 2. And there we go. Tan inverse of tan x by 2 is nothing but same as x by 2. So, starting with a very complex looking e expression, it all has become nothing but just a mere x by 2. That is what we need to learn in this section, where we discuss how to write an expression in the simplest form. The word simplest is a relative one. We may not end up with such a simpler expression in our next question. Let us take a look at it. And here now we have an expression tan inverse of root of 1 plus x square minus 1 upon x. x is not equal to 0. Now, what worked in favor of us in our previous question was that the expression on which tan inverse was acting had trigonometric functions involved. So, I could immediately use 1 minus cos x is 2 sin square x by 2. I do not have that possibility here. So, what we do for such functions is we try to introduce the trigonometric functions by considering a substitution. And what substitution would work here, you might say? Well, the one which works for us, right? So, think of x as perhaps tan theta. Why? Because 1 plus tan square theta will become sec square theta. Under the square root, it becomes simpler sec theta. Let us see if that works with other terms around as well. So, start by putting x is equal to tan theta and the expression becomes tan inverse of root of 1 plus tan square theta minus 1 by tan theta. As I said, 1 plus tan square theta you know is very well sec square theta and therefore, you get tan inverse sec theta minus 1 by tan theta. Simplify further that is write sec theta is 1 by cos theta. So, tan theta is sin theta by cos theta. You end up with something like this. Now, I am sure you are ready to use the grade 11 trigonometric formulas, which says 1 minus cos theta is, we just did that, 2 sin square theta by 2. So, what about the denominator? I should write that also in half angle form. You agree? So, sin theta is 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2. Let us put it all in place and see things working out. And that leads us to tan inverse of tan theta by 2, which gives us theta by 2. Now, the only thing is theta was our assumption. We brought in a substitution. So, rewrite it back as half of tan inverse x. And that definitely is a simpler expression compared to what we started with, was not it? All right. Now, let us take a look at other possibilities. What we also can do with these properties is solve equations which involve inverse trigonometric functions. Here is a question for you. If tan inverse of x minus 1 by x minus 2 plus tan inverse of x plus 1 by x plus 2 is pi by 4, then find the value of x. Remember, we used to do something called as trigonometric equations in grade 11. So, this is also an equation where the unknown is x. We have to find the value of x. 
So, again if you see the left hand side of this equation, it is very well giving you the signal that it is time to use that fifth property which says tan inverse x plus tan inverse y is equal to tan inverse x plus y by 1 minus x y. x and y are slightly more complex expressions, but let us just give it a go. We start with the expression using the properties simplifying down to something like this, which is not a very simple expression, but if you just calmly take the LCM simplify, let us see what we get. We get something which looks like x square plus x minus 2 plus x square minus x minus 2 in the numerator, denominator is x square minus 4 minus x square plus 1. And what we can do with that tan inverse is by the definition the expression rewritten as tan of pi by 4 on the right hand side which was nothing but 1. So, in a way we have now come out of the inverse trigonometric and trigonometric equations and we have simply a quadratic to solve. Take a second simplify and see if you have something like 2 x square minus 4 equal to negative 3, which gives us x is equal to plus minus 1 by root 2 and that is the solution of the given inverse trigonometric equation. You will find some of these questions uh, listed in your NCRT which are very manageable. Just stay calm and just keep the properties that we had done today in mind. What you also may just uh, learn and use as you practice is that there is certain guideline that you can follow when you choose the substitution. Let us take a minute on understanding what works and when will it work. I have here a table for you which suggests what kind of substitution works when the expression involves certain specific forms. Now, this is just a guideline for you, it is not a sure shot method. So, let us say 90 percent of the questions may work if you keep this understanding in mind, but then somewhere you will have to mix and match as well. Now, what does this suggest? When the expressions that is tan inverse of something involves root of 1 plus x square, you may take the substitution x equal to tan theta or cot theta. It is what we did in our first question as well today, because under root of 1 plus tan square theta will become sec theta simplified. Similarly, 1 plus cot square theta may give you under root of cosec square theta, which is cosec theta. So, things may just start shaping up. The second hint that is given here is that if the expressions involved are root of 1 minus x square, then taking x as sin theta or cos theta may help. You figure out right root of 1 minus sin square theta is under root of cos square theta and so it becomes much simpler, it is just going to be cos theta. Then using other trigonometric formulas, you can progress ahead. This is only the start. Now, suppose I have root of 1 minus x or and both may be root of 1 plus x also in the expression. Then very, very confidently you may take x as cos 2 theta or cos theta, because 1 minus cos theta is 2 sin square theta by 2. 1 plus cos theta is 2 cos square theta by 2, square root would be taken care of. Some simplification will start off lead to the final result. Suppose the expression involves under root of x square minus 1, then taking x as sec theta or cosec theta may help, because under root of sec square theta minus 1 will be under root of tan square theta, which is tan theta. I guess if you keep these tips in mind and work with understanding, things will work out for you. I hope today's discussion and our earlier lessons on inverse trigonometric functions have cleared some concepts and some doubts for all of you. Pick up your textbook, do some more practice and perfect this chapter. All the best to all of you.